So I have gotten some questions about how does the GoPro Dual Hero system work uh, to do 3D videos. Uh, I think when it was advertised, this product by GoPro, they didn't really push it as a 3D product as much. And it was mainly designed to record using two GoPro Hero 3 Plus Blacks. You can do a whole bunch of different things, but basically in this video I'm going to go over how to shoot, how to, you know, what you get with a dual go with the dual hero system and uh, how to edit it. Basically what you get when you buy the GoPro dual hero system is th this right here. You get the housing that can hold two GoPro Hero 3 Plus Blacks and it, it has to be 3 Plus Blacks uh, from GoPro because it's the only model that works with this system. So this thing is a synchronizer that, that synchronizes these GoPro cameras together perfectly. So it's, it gen locks the two devices together so the synchronization comes out of one of the cameras and the other one kind of follows what, it, what the master camera does to keep them in sync. So you have to have two GoPro Hero 3 Plus Blacks. These are going for like 125 bucks a piece on eBay used. I've got some vinyl skin on them so I was just trying to black them out for a different rig but uh, they're just normal 3 plus black cameras, nothing special about them at all, they're totally stock. So to make this work, to shoot a 3D video, you buy, you buy the Dual Hero, which was about 200 bucks, it probably still is 200. Get yourself two GoPro Hero 3 plus blacks, and then you have to have them, put them in some kind of amount. So GoPro intends you to use their system, so you basically can stick them in the back of this thing and they're the lenses face towards each other pretty closely um, actually the way this thing goes in here you have to take one of the cameras and the master is the big fat one here you have to hook it on to the back press it in and uh, you should be able to drop that into the side here I'm just trying to make sure I've got the orientation right in here. And then this is the slave side. It just plugs into the other camera. So you can see the light blinking. That means they're all hooked up. Close this thing up. Whoops, I got it in backwards. So just have to flip it. So that it only fits one way and one side. Close it into the housing, blah, blah, blah. I usually check the, the gasket around the outside of the camera to make sure it's straight because I have lost GoPros uh, because that gasket sometimes gets kinked and you want to make sure it's straight before you go in the water. Um, so that gives you your 3D rig, basically. So the lenses are kind of close together and that works great for some situations if you're filming stuff closely like if I'm on my surfboard it's a perfect uh, kind of setup so they're both synchronized so I'll turn them on with the power button right up here in the front and you can see one camera's on now the other camera's on and this is upside down here you can see that it just switched to level so now when you look at the cameras each one of them has its own counter for how many photographs it's taken it says 3D in the uh, little window there it's a little hard to read so this, this camera has four 3D images on it, and this camera has 36 3D images on it. And the cameras still are totally independent about how they record the 3D video. So as, it's, uh, as you're using this thing, it's going to fill this video card with the video, and also this one with its own video. They're going to just, the cards sit in the, each individual camera, and you can take them off later and do that. So... Uh, you also change the settings if you've used a GoPro the same exact way. So right now I'm set up for 2.7K, uh, 30 frames a second. So you can change that to the different modes. Now we're in still image mode and it changes both cameras. So this is convenient where you only really have to mess and look at the master camera here. The slave camera will follow whatever the master does. So. Once they're hooked up and, and, and synchronized, just by plugging it all in together, it'll all work. Uh, so let's go through the menus and get back to shooting video. 
Okay, so we're at 3D video. It's set for 2.7K, 30 frames per second, which is great. High resolution, higher than 1080p. You can downsample that to 1080p and get a nice sharp image out of it. It's what I would use if I was doing something that wasn't fast action. If I'm doing fast stuff like surfing or snowboarding or some real action stuff, I would go down to 60 frames a second at 1080p for this type of camera system. But it's up, up to you, whichever. You can use all, almost all the modes for a normal GoPro Hero 3 Plus back, Black work with this, and it will do it in 3D. So camera's all pretty much ready to go. You basically point the camera whatever you want, start shooting it when you hit, hit the big button here. You can see the, the lights on the back flash. So it's recording and you can see both cameras have their lights on and you can do the same thing where you turn the LEDs off in the in the settings menu and all that stuff. So right now this is filming a 3D video basically because we got the two cameras right next to each other and uh, you can hit the top button here again to stop the video. So now that you've basically shot a 3D video, so from here you just basically turn off the cameras I'm going to pull the memory cards out of both of them. You can see it'll turn both of them off. And you can just dump the cameras out. Separate them out of the back. And you pull the memory cards. Now the 3D video I just shot is going to be on uh, the left image is on one card and the right image is on the other card. So you just take these two cards out, go over to your computer, load them up into your computer, and I can show you the rest of the process. So now I'm in GoPro Studio that comes with, you know, it's free. You just download the software from GoPro. And I'm going to import the two files that I just took off the memory cards from each of the cameras. So one camera has the left video, one camera has the right video. And the nice thing about the GoPro Studio is it recognizes that the video clips match as a 3D video. So when you select one, the other, or both of the files, you end up getting one file in GoPro Studio that says this is a 3D video. So it already knows that it's 3D and it's already sort of taken care of it. So what you see when you are in the editor is uh, a 2D version of, of a 3D video. So you can do your set your, you know, scrub the file, look at how it came out in its raw form and effectively you have to move it to the conversion list so we have just one file here so I'm adding it to the conversion list there it is and I'm hitting convert so what this is doing is it's translating the file into a different format so this was shot with uh, Protune so this is a, a big file if you're just trying to keep life simple and you don't want to mess with it very much and you can save a little bit of memory space on your card you can turn Protune off when you're recording I use Protune for everything. I have plenty of space on the memory cards. It gives you better quality simply. It is harder to edit and post-process and the raw files look worse but there, there's more data there and it requires post-processing and you will get a better final result with that. Okay, so the file is now loaded. So proceed to step two. They come up with these templates. I've never used them. It's, it's probably something you don't even need to ever mess with. So here's our video on the left we want to dump it into the timeline at the bottom. I'm not going to do any edits because of course you can learn how to do your own edits yourself. So if you record with Protune, you want to use the Protune profile. That's the baseline average setting. Of course you can tweak all kinds of stuff up here and you can go to town on the internet and figure out what all those things do. But you don't have to do much of anything else. If all you want to do is get your video and play the thing in 3D, you're pretty much ready to go at this point. So we've got our video, moved it in here. We've picked the correct color profile, which is Protune. If I shot without Protune, you can use none and the video would look really good too. So you can see the, if you scrub through it, you can see how, you know, you can watch the video. Export option, we're going to save the video file. So you can pick your bit rate and so from here you choose export and this thing's going to want a path to export the file. I can just give it something here real quick and it's going to save this video when it's done saving we can take a look at how I eventually will view this as a 3D file. Okay now that the file is done exporting I've opened it in a player and you can see what the file is and it's just a video file that has one camera on the left and the other camera on the right and 
that's really all a 3D video is. It's two different cameras. You have two eyes in your head. Using one camera for each eye, it simulates what you would see if you were there. It's the simplest way to put it, really. There's nothing really special about any video file other than that. It's got two images on it. So from here, this is just a normal video like any other video. So the way I watch 3D videos, I have a couple different options. I'm using a, an Asus VG278H. It's a 3D display. So now what I've done is I've opened up a piece of software called Stereoscopic Player, and I'm going to open this video in this piece of software because this is a 3D video player. So I'll show you my display in a second, but I'll show you what I have to do to open the file up. So I pick the file and it immediately comes up with this screen to say, how did you build this 3D file? And I know that I have a side-by-side -side format with one camera on the left, one on the right. I know it's a 16 by nine aspect ratio because virtually everything in the world is. And I know it's not interlaced. So I hit okay. And this allows me to view the image in 3D on my, on my display and I'll change the camera angle so you can see my display. Okay, so here's my 3D display and it's an Asus VG278H. It's a 3D display. It does uh, page flipping, so you need the active shutter glasses. So I have my NVIDIA system. So this is uh, NVIDIA 3D Vision system. So when you buy that hardware bundle, it comes with an emitter. This, this display has a, an emitter in it that works with the glasses because the, the display has to send a signal to the glasses to let it to know how to work. This is a shutter glass system. There's different types of systems out there. But right now the image is in 2D mode. If I go to full screen, you can see the display flicker a little bit. And then it switches to 3D. So when I put my 3D glasses on and hit the button, I see this image in 3D and it has all the depth and everything I need in it. So that's pretty much the full life cycle from shooting all the way getting to getting to the point where you can view the image. So I also have the Oculus Rift headset that uh, of course does everything in 3D. So that's it from the beginning to end how you can shoot, process, and then finally view a 3D image. It's just kind of a quick overview of how the whole thing really works and what it looks like when you have the whole system. I will be doing another video that shows you how to do more involved 3D processing in, in my complete workflow, which is a little bit different. I use uh, Vegas software, and I also use a different encoder that is not in Vegas, because Vegas' big weakness is their encoder is not that good. So I'll show you in a different video how to go kind of more in-depth and how to use the Vegas software to do the 3D processing as opposed to using GoPro if you want to kind of take it up a notch and gain a little bit more control out of your system. So that will be in the next video I do.